Hey, welcome back to a session with a friend and host, Edu Ada. For some time now, we'll be talking about sequence and progression. So we treated arithmetic progression, that is what we also call linear sequence, in the previous video. And we also some spoke of the sum of this type of sequence. Quickly today, we will be talking about the geometric progression, or what we also call the exponential sequence. Before we, plead, before we progress, I will want to plead with everyone not listening or watching this video to please subscribe. It is free. You can as well like, share, and make comments to this video and everything on my channel. Thank you very much. We we'll move now. When we deal with uh, geometric progression, the nth term of geometric progression is always given as a times r raised to power n minus one, where this is what the nth term, and this a is the first term, and this r is the common ratio. This n is the number of terms. This is one. So this is a formula for nth term. And if we know, of course, we know to how to get our first term when we did that in the arithmetic progression. The first number in a sequence is our first term, is a T1. To get our common ratio, we had it is a geometric progression. So to calculate the common ratio is different from the way we calculate the common difference. In arithmetic progression, there we do c2 minus t1 equal to t3 minus t2 and on and on like that. But here we divide, so we're going to be having t2 to t1, t2 divided by t1 be equal to t3 divided by t2, and that can be equal to this on and on. We have tn plus 1 on to tn. So let's solve the question we have on the board quickly. So now, yeah, given the first question says, given that the root, okay, the root, uh, that root six, okay, we have one, let me write this, this is root six, root six, three root two. Three root six two root two three root six then you have nine root two are the first four terms of an exponential sequence so this is t one this is t two this is t three this is t four Find the eighth term. Now to find the eighth term first, our nth term is always equal to a times r raised to the power n minus one. So we know our a. This, this is our a. Then we need our r, which we don't have. We want to calculate t8. If you have to calculate t8, this is eighth term we need the first term the common ratio then n will be eight minus one <coughs> n will be eight then you have my eight minus one there but since we don't have that let's work around this so our r can be equal to t2 divided by two we have three ratio two divided by ratio six and root 6 rather 3 root 2 divided by no, root 6 uh, we need to simplify this to simplify this let's rationalize we have root 6 we have root 6 so that can be equal to what 3 root 12 upon root 6 times root 6 is 6 and this is also the same thing as root 
12 is uh, root 4 times 3. So that's like 3 times 2. That is 6 root uh, 6 root 3 over 6. So this cancel out this. So our R eventually is root 3. You get that? Now since our R is root 3, we can now go and solve our T8. Eight term will now be equal to so the first term is root 6 times common ratio is root 3 all raised to power of um, 8 minus 1 that is 7 so our T8 let me write this So we have t eight term and now be equal to root six root six times um root six times okay you have root three in seven places root three and root three and root three And root 3 times root 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times root 3 times root 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's as logical as that. So we have root 6 times you put all this in what root 3 times root 3 root 3 times root 3 is 3 root 3 times root 3 is 3 then 3 times root 3 this will be 3 root 3 then 3 root 3 times root 3 that will give us 9 9 times root 3 9 root 3, 9 root 3 times 3, well, 9 root 3 times root 3, that will give us 27. So we're going to add 27 root 3. So what do we have? Finalize this. We have. can say we have 27 and 6 times 3 so I have 27 times root 18 and that will be 27 times that's 9 times 2 so that will be 3 times root 2 so 27 times 3 is what? 27 times 3. So the answer is 81 root 2. That's the eighth term. And what the eighth term will give us. Quickly we move to the next question. I believe you got that. You got that. If the second term of a geometric progression is 4, oh, did I wipe this away? Uh, come in. Oh, this question is not complete. If the geometric progression of 
algebra is an exercise of and the fifth term Is one divided by sixteen the seventh term is so solving this we quickly move on. If the second term of an AP now the second term that is T seven. Oh, the second term, sorry, T2 now be A R raised to the power 2 minus 1, and that implies that T2 is the A R. So, we say the second term of the geometric progression is 4, so that means 4. Is equal to a r. I will give me equation one, and the fifth term is one over sixteen. So I have one over sixteen. The fifth term should be a r raised to power four. This is equation two. So we have two equations that we solve simultaneously. The best way we can solve these equations because we have a multiplying r equals something a multiplying r power something equals to 1 over 16 is by dividing. We can add or subtract. So we can just say equation 2 divided by equation 1. So we can say equation 2. Divided by equation one. What do we have? We have one upon sixteen, which is equal to a r raised to power four. Divided by this side will be divided by four. This side will be divided by a r. And this implies that one over sixteen divided by 4 over 1 and be equal to a r raised to the power of 4 divided by a r so a cancel out a r cancel out this one becomes 3 here then this one this implies that 1 over 16 times 1 over 4 this can be equal to r raised to power 3. And here, we can proceed by saying that uh, 1 over 16 times 4, that is 64. So 1 over 64 can be equal to r raised to power 3. So what do we have? We have 4 raised to power of minus 3. Or yeah, 4 raised to power of minus 3 can be equal to r raised to power 3. So now you take the cube root of both sides or you multiply the both powers by 1 over 3. So if you find that. You take the cube root of both sides, you take the cube root of both sides. We are going to be having I think here, yeah. let me take the cube root here. 
because we're already having if I've taken the cube root, I'll have taken the cube root somewhere here. So I will get confused. So I have um, this. Let me multiply the powers by one over three. So what do we have? We're going to be having four raised to the power minus three times one over three. Uh, R raised to the power three times one over three. So this becomes four raised to the power minus one is equal to R. That implies that what R is equal to one over four. I won't gotten R to be 1 over 4, we can get our A. Yes, since we add the first um, T2, T2 was equal to AR. Yes, and T2 is 4. So from, let me call it equation 1. We use it as equation 1 the other time. From equation 1. 4 was equal to AR. And that means 4 is equal to what? A times 1 over 4. What does this mean? This means that our A A will be equal to 16. So now we are told to look for the what? The seventh term. So T7, which is normally A R raised to power 6, that will be our A is for A16, that will be 16 times R raised to power 6, R is uh, 1 over 4, and 1 over 4, R raised to power 6. So what are we going to be having? So we have this. Six seven. So we have four raised to power of six. Four zero nine six, so we have sixteen times one over four zero nine six, and that will be sixteen over four zero nine six. What do we have? Breaking that down, and say okay. Yeah, we have um, eight here is two. 1845 8 here 1 of 2 so that becomes what 2 over 512 which we can see break down we have 2 year 1 2 year 2 keep 1 year we have 5 and 1 year we have 6 so t7 Seven stem, but one over two, five, six. So thank you for your time. Please don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. If you want to make any comment, any recommendations? Please make use of the comment section. Thank you very much.